Hey everyone, my name is Matt. Welcome back to our home renovation or model thingamabob or whatever we're calling it. This time, hopefully, we should be finishing up these two rooms, the great room and the office, so that I can uh, get back to working in there and start getting that kitchen built out. So the last couple of episodes have been on making the trim. So we have the baseboard stock here and then the window things are already built. They're built as separate units that can be finished prepped finished and then installed, and at least a lot of finishing work is already done once they go in. We'll just have a little bit of touch-up work to do to fill any uh, screw holes or whatever that attach them onto the actual house. So I already finished prepped, and Lindsay helped me finish prep a couple of these window assemblies. This is the last one, the big one that goes here, and it needs to be sanded and caulked still. I already went through and filled all the nail holes that filler has dried. So now it can be sanded. The actual molding profiles can be sanded and refined. Some of these, like this uh, bead detail here, got a little fuzzy. So it needs to be cleaned up with some sandpaper and everything needs to be kind of, you know, mellowed out and uh, paint prepped. Okay, this one is done. All the holes are filled, all the profiles are sanded, all the edges are broken, and all the seams are caulked. So that is uh, ready to go for paint now. Uh, I will say this much, having this assembled like this is a lot easier for the paint prep than having it already like in place. The one I did downstairs in the office was a lot more of a hassle, trying to get at everything with all this like up on the wall. Like this, you can, kind of, you can walk around it everywhere, you get good angles and everything. So having a pre-assemble like this, at least for this step, makes it uh, quite a bit easier. So I'm gonna go through and uh, finish prepping the room, and then I'll see you in a little bit, and I'll start doing some painting on all this trim. All right, here is our uh, completed paint booth. We're ready to go for paint, paint stuff. So I have a filtered intake and a filtered exhaust in here and then everything else is uh, sealed up. The rest of the house has all the windows open. It's a beautiful, beautiful day. It's like 72 outside, so it's probably the perfect day for this. It's not too humid either, and uh, all of that. So I got this uh, HVLP setup that uh, I bought, and then I also bought a pressure pot for it. What the pressure pot does is it takes the cup and it takes it off the gun so that the actual material is separate from the gun. That makes it so that you're not carrying around a whole cup of material with you the whole time. Makes it a lot uh, more comfortable to use and you can spray at any angle because there's no pickup straw. So you can spray upside down if you want to and the cup's bigger so you can put more material in and not to refill you know, as often. I of course ordered the pressure pot set up for the wrong sprayer so I won't be able to use it for this part of the project but this is what I'll be using for spraying all the trim in the sunroom and all the cabinetry is going to go into the kitchen. So I'm using the exact same product that I'm going to use on the cabinets for all the trim. This is a conversion varnish, so it has a base and then it has a hardener you mix into it and it uh, should dry pretty quickly since it's uh, lacquer and I should be able to put the coats on fairly fast in here and kind of go from there. So I'm going to mix some of that up and then I have a piece of drywall here which I will use to kind of practice and set the gun. And then I'll spray the first of the window frame assembly things. And then I'll go ahead and get the, uh, the baseboard set up on the sawhorses and get a coat of finish onto those as well.
Okay, we've got one coat on everything in here, and then the big frame has the second coat on it already. So what I'm doing now is going through and I'll sand everything. So the window assemblies, they've got a pretty good amount of fuzziness around here, especially the areas that were machined. So those will get, uh, this whole thing will get sanded again. The baseboards I'll sand as well. They're big flat areas, so it's pretty quick. Just hit them with the orbital sander. It gets rid of any little bit of little nibbies or weird stuff, and especially if there's any kind of fraying, the, uh, the lacquer seems to be able to find any bit of frayed fibers pretty easily. So that's what I'm gonna do now real quick, go through and sand everything again. I'm also having this issue of kind of running out of space. So I'll do another session of spraying for final coats. I'll do all of the stuff on the rack and one of these frames, and then everything gets out of here. And then I can do another round of two frames on the cart and the sawhorses, and then another round with the last two frames again. It's, this is a lot of space, but it's, it fills up quickly with all these things and you wanna keep the stuff you sprayed away from the area you're spraying because you can overspray onto the things you just sprayed, which will kind of mess with the finish as well. Luckily, it's been pretty good. The stuff drying back there hasn't had really any overspray landing on it, so that's nice. And I kind of want to keep it that way. So uh, intermediate finish prep time. So there is all the trim with a few coats on it. The, uh, the cap moldings took the most amount of work. They have like three coats on them because they needed the most amount of sanding and kind of finessing because the cut wasn't super great coming around this corner here, around this curve. So those are looking quite a bit better than they were before. These are all good to go. We got all the window things in here. That's the, uh, the big one that goes <laughs> over there. It looks a lot bigger in the kitchen. So this is all ready to go for primer now on the walls. So my friend Sam lent me his uh, sprayer thing. He lent me this uh, when I did the shop in the garage, which is directly below here. And uh, we'll see if I still remember how to use this, but I'm gonna go around and start priming all the walls and the ceilings. Uh, hopefully it won't be too big of a deal with the hose length and the size of this room and everything. And I'm hoping that today I can just roll through into my wall paint as well. So go around, prime everything, and then come back and start doing the walls. And I will get into why I'm doing the walls first, not the ceiling first, later on in the video. But ideally, if I can just be in here painting all day and I get through all the wall paint today, tomorrow I can start installing all the trim and getting that further along. Okay, there's the room all primed, and uh, that, was, that was quite a lot. It's a lot of climbing up down the scaffold, moving it, repositioning it, spraying a little air, and then moving to the next section. I couldn't imagine trying to do this with a roller. This is almost like a two-person job. One person to run the sprayer, 
and the other person to drive the scaffold. But uh, that was four hours. That was a lot longer than I was hoping this would take. But next I will, uh, I'm gonna have to sit for a bit. It's like a, uh, a jungle in here right now, <laughs> with all the humidity. So I'm gonna open things up a little bit. Hopefully let the primer dry a bit and then get into spraying the wall color. Okay, primer is all done. And it's always crazy how much brighter a room feels when you paint it all white. But that is all set up now. And next I can start working on spraying the walls. Okay, so that's two coats of paint on the wall. It's looking really nice and it's, it's looking really good. So with the walls done, now I can move on to trim so I can start getting those window units installed, really set in place for now. And I can cut back the cover on the floor and start installing all the baseboards.
Okay, we got the base installed all the way around through here to that corner. And I've installed the cap on all of the, uh, the pieces that aren't not gonna get coped into a corner. And I have over here just one piece of shoe molding cut just to give an idea of how the whole layup is gonna look. I will uh, I'll fill all the bottom holes and the base before I put the cap on, since it'll be a lot easier to sand all those flush and everything before that cap goes on. And I already cocked all the corners and everything before the caps go on, so I have that all taken care of. And uh, next, I think I'm gonna cut this guy here. It gets coped into the corner and then mitered here on the outside. And the same thing will happen for this short piece. Coped into the corner and then mitered at the corner. Coped, coped to the inside, mitered to the outside. <laughs> Okay, we got cap molding and base installed all the way around through here into the little window thingamabobber back to there. So next, before I switch to the next area, I'm gonna start installing the shoe molding, which I don't really care too much for shoe molding. I definitely don't like quarter round. At my old house where I installed baseboards, I actually scribed the baseboards to the floor and then used any sort of shoe mold. And I really like that look, it's really clean. But in this case, I felt like the shoe mold was kind of needed because these are so tall. I think the shoe mold will help kind of break up that large flat face of that bottom base area and just make it look a little more, I don't know, interesting or something. <laughs> I don't really know. But yeah, normally I would just want to scribe this to the floor, but I decided to go with the shoe mold just to give it a little more uh, visual interest than anything. And the shoe mold is sort of a fingernail profile. It's um, not a quarter round, which I, that's something I really don't like. But the fingernail profile is only, I think it's like maybe a half inch or three eighths of an inch thick by three quarter tall, something like that. So it's tall and skinny, which I think will be nice. Okay, there's a shoe molding all installed. And I think having that line there along the base actually makes the baseboard feel even taller. So I'm, uh, I'm pretty happy with that whole assembly. It looks uh, pretty good and pretty elegant. So next, we're gonna switch gears a little bit and get back to flooring. I got a whole bunch of patching to do 
over here because the old door used to be there. We have a new return there and that return has to get smaller. So here is uh, what I'm dealing with. So this is the one of the new returns. So I need to kind of just fill this in around here. But then the, uh, the bigger one is gonna be the old existing return. There's one big return in this room, which is right here. Before his door was here, it made sense. But now this has to start somewhere over here and come into this area here. The HVAC guys came by and cut the location of where it needs to be. So I know like the size and placement of the actual hole that has to be here. And then this all has to get uh, filled back in so I can actually run flooring back out there. So this room, like the other rooms in the house, has in-floor heat, but unlike the other rooms which have the transfer plate underneath the subfloor, this one has the PEX lines in this uh, overpour. So this is a um, like a cement product. I don't know what it is, some kind of, you know, I don't know, cement thing. And uh, the PEX lines are in there. So it's kind of like embedded in concrete kind of thing like we have in the, the basement. Uh, when we cut that area out of there, there were no in-floor heat lines. I'm assuming there won't be any in this little patch here. So the first thing I'm gonna do is start breaking up this area here so I get down to the subfloor and actually start making that cut. So hopefully no pecs. Okay, the floor is all patched and it's kind of nice not having this giant hole in the uh, the walkway anymore. So this has been on the to-do list since uh, basically since we started. 
So it's nice to get that done. I'm gonna stop at this row here and I'll do this filler row and install this nosing later on when I'm working on this face. Um, we have the cabinet here, which the nosing will actually go into. And that leads me to what's gonna happen next with my baseboards, a little bit of an issue or something I have to plan for, is that the actual casings, I don't have them yet. We don't have a jam set for this doorway yet. This is gonna be a fully, uh, fully cased opening. So look kind of like the windows as you go through here. But the bottom is gonna get some plinth blocks and those blocks are gonna be set by the location of the, the jam. The jam itself is set by what's happening on this side of the wall. So until this side of the wall is done, I don't have the final placement of the other side, which the baseboards have to go into. On this side, the casings go directly into the wall and then you have like a little step for the jam. That's where the jam is. On this side, we have that cabinet. The casing goes right into the side of the cabinet. There's no wall space or anything. So what's gonna happen, or at least what I'm gonna plan for, is I'm gonna plan for where the location should be. And hopefully I can get pretty close and I'll end my baseboard where the plinth block should end up. Um, what I can do is, since I haven't made those yet, and since I'm gonna be making them myself anyway, if I need to adjust those to make them work a little bit, I can do that. I can make them any size I want. I just want them to be pretty close so they kind of match each other. Ideally, they'd be the same or very close visually and that, you know, they're not too far off. So that's uh, what I'm going to do with this wall now. So same thing as before, we're going to get the lower base board thing installed. I'll go all the way around the room now and go around, around the fireplace and everything. And then uh, do the cap moldings and the shoe moldings. So same exact thing again. And with that last piece of shoe molding, now we have the three piece baseboard all the way, all the way around the entire room. <laughs> this looks amazing. So I'm gonna clean up a little bit and then I'll turn my attention to getting these things installed uh, permanently. Okay, welcome back to the paint booth. I have uh, filled all the holes, sanded everything smooth, caulked all the seams, and I have all my masking in place for all the baseboards and three of the windows. I need, uh, I need some windows for uh, light since uh, those are not working and this is not enough. <laughs> and I also need to have at least two of them operable for ventilation. So I'm gonna finish up masking this guy. I got a little piece to put up there and then I can go ahead and spray it all the baseboard all the way around the whole room. And then these three windows, the finish I'm using dry so fast. So probably by the time I get done spraying, I'll be able to unmask everything I sprayed and then just finish up these last three windows, spray those and uh, that should be just about it. So a little bit more prep work. I got that one less piece of masking to do. I got to clean this room again get it all tidied up, and then uh, back to spraying some more conversion varnish. Woohoo!
Okay, there's all the trim all painted, installed, and done. So next I'm gonna move on to the ceiling and finally answer the question of why I'm doing the ceiling last. And the, I guess the short answer to that, or the beginning answer to that, is that it's easier to mask a line on the wall than it is to mask a line on the ceiling. Now if you're thinking, well, why don't you paint the walls last, roll it, and then just cut it with a brush along the seam, uh, that would leave me with the result that I'm trying to avoid. And that is that the seams in this room are kind of all over the place. There's not really a truly straight line and it becomes painfully obvious at those intersections where the paint color changes. So along the wall, I'll be able to mask off a straight line or a straighter line that is there right now. And that line probably will deviate between being technically on the ceiling versus the wall but it'll be straighter, so it should help me mask some of the waviness that is existing between the wall transitioning up into the slopes. And then the other area that has even worse seams is gonna be at the very top where the ceiling meets those slopes. Those are literally all over the place and like curved over the length and S-curved and C-curved and it's a lot. So to help combat that, this room used to be a three-tone paint job. There was the wall color, there was a slightly different color on the slopes, a little bit lighter than the walls. And then the ceiling was the traditional white. That flat area up there was just white. And the transition between the colored slopes and that flat white uh, top there really showed again that the lines are not straight. So I'm going to paint all of that as one color and then the walls will be their own color. The ceiling, like I did in the uh, the kitchen area is going to be at 50% of the pigment of the wall, so it should also help to mask a little bit of the unevenness going from the walls to the slopes, where my actual seam tape line things are. And then of course they'll really hide the transition between the slopes and the ceiling because it'll be all one color and you won't really be able to determine that there is a curvy seam up there. Spraying the ceiling last worked out really well. The prep work wasn't actually as bad as I was expecting. It took only an hour and a half to mask and drape all the walls in here, which was super quick. And the overall paint job makes a lot of those, these things uh, much harder to see. And the ones I know that are there are definitely, I can still see them because I know they're there, but they don't look nearly as bad as they, uh, as they used to. So when we bought this property, we really fell in love with the land and the scenery and this room being where it is, it's kind of situated on top of the garage. So you have a nice elevated view kind of all around the whole property, which uh, we have missed. So it's nice to have the space back again and be able to see everything again. Also, now that we have the bigger windows over here next to the fireplace, we can actually see out into the side yard and see what's going on over there. So it's nice to have the space to be able to watch all the critters and just enjoy the property once again in here. Probably the biggest change just from the like the feel of being in this room is the movement of the doorway. It used to be offset to one side of the room. So you ended up walking into one giant room, repositioning the doorway to the middle kind of divides the space nicely out into two smaller rooms, which makes the space quite a bit more usable. So on this side, we have more like a seating area. And then on the other side, it's gonna be more like the, uh, the family area, the kids area. They can do kind of whatever they want over there. And then we can hang out and relax on this side of the room. Another big change in this room has been lighting. It was always really dark. So when the electricians were here, they installed six six inch can fixtures in the ceiling, which really helped a lot because the only like ceiling light was from the previous ceiling fans that were there, which only had two candelabra bulbs. So it really didn't provide a whole lot of light in here. We've also replaced the sconces from a single fixture to these double fixtures. And then we're waiting on this fixture here to go in the middle, which is gonna be a three bulb fixture 
which should uh, even more help to make this room a lot more bright because it is a big space. And at night, at least before all this, it was like a dungeon in here. And lastly, I know I said I was gonna work on the office as part of this video, but uh, I got to the end of this and I was like, yeah, I don't wanna do any more painting <laughs> for a bit. And I really should just get started on the kitchen. So next time we'll be getting into starting on the cabinetry in the kitchen, which is uh, gonna be quite the adventure as we build out a fully custom kitchen uh, for me for the first time doing that. So that should be a fun, big adventure. So that's gonna do it for this one. Thank you as always for watching. I greatly appreciate it. If you have any questions or comments on the home renovation or model, whatever we're calling a thingamabobber, anything here in the great room, anything back in the shop, which is directly beneath me. I'm standing over my table saw right now, which is kind of a weird thought. Anyway, please feel free to leave me a comment. As always, I'd be happy to answer any questions you might have. And until next time, <laughs> happy working. Our room is done.